going to mug me? I'm not going to mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the Beef and Marathon. Download Veeley now. Glyn Rosell was today found guilty of killing 41-year-old Linda Rosell. On what turned out to be his last day of liberty, Rosell arrived still claiming he was innocent. What made this murder trial astonishing? There was no body. Despite a huge police search and public appeals for help, no trace of her has been found. It's as if Mrs Rosell has just disappeared into thin air. For 15 years, Glyn Rizal has said that he didn't murder his wife, that he's not guilty. There have always been question marks around the forensic evidence that convicted Glyn Rizal. Linda Rizal's body has never been found. And now, now, suddenly, there are reports linking Linda Mazel to a double murder. Christopher Halliwell, a taxi driver from Swindon, serving a life sentence for murder. But were there more victims? This is somebody who murdered people in the same area that Linda Mazel went missing from. And that needs to be investigated. Have you ever done a lie detector test? Polygraph, no, I haven't. Would you? In a shot, yes. So this is this is the alley then. The amount of windows overlooking, you wouldn't possibly think this is a very good abduction site, surely. It wouldn't be my first choice. What did you feel in that moment about whether Glyn was guilty or innocent? I don't think my brother killed his wife. Glinda obstructed my exit and I'd brush her aside and she went through a glass door panel. I have to tell you, Glyn, that the, the, tell, the retelling of that doesn't come across well. The boot has been exposed to a source of blood matching Linda Rizal, but when precisely it got there, mm -hmm. we simply can't say. Well, I know I didn't kill her, so I've got an advantage uh, over the experts. Where are we now? The strongest evidence against Glyn Brazil was that his wife Linda's blood was found in the car that he was driving on the day that she disappeared. Glyn has always pointed out, though, that the blood wasn't found in the first two searches of the car, and he says the blood must therefore have been planted sometime before it was discovered on that third search. Our experts at Inside Justice have identified some other forensic tests that could tell us whether the blood was there all the time. So we're waiting now to find out if the police will release the sample to us for that test. But there's a line of inquiry which has turned this case on its head. It's one of the reasons we started looking at it in the first place. Reports linking Linda Rizal with a double murderer, Christopher Halliwell. Are there other g girls, women, who have been killed who you think he was...? There are, unquestionably. I mean, I spent a lot of time with Christopher Halliwell, and there's no question from all the information that I gathered when I was running this inquiry in 2011 that he has committed other murders. We were aware particularly of Linda Rizal. Linda Rizal... Whose husband is serving time for her murder. Exactly. When I first heard it on the radio, I thought, you know, there you go. That's what happens in cases like this. Cases that for year after year after year, the person keeps saying they haven't done it, they weren't involved, they didn't do it. And then some other thing happens, which then 
starts to make the whole thing unravel. I don't know if that's what's going to happen in this case with Halliwell. I don't know enough about it yet, but it is bizarre that suddenly Linda Rozelle's name is being linked to somebody who is a double murderer. I'm meeting the ex-detective who's linking Halliwell and Linda. He's the man who led the initial investigation that caught Halliwell. I'm going to meet him just near his home. Hello, Steve. Louise. Hi, nice to meet you. This was a missing person, 22-year-old girl, Sean O'Callaghan, been on a night out in Swindon, didn't come back. She was enticed or got into uh, what we believe to be an estate vehicle that led us to Christopher Halliwell, who's a taxi driver, arrested him. Mm. So you're working on the basis that she could still be alive. Exactly. We exactly. need to find out from him where she is. Exactly. He took us to where he'd repositioned Sean O'Callaghan's uh, body. He'd murdered her as it transpired uh, within two minutes of her getting in the car. Wow. Halliwell admitted murdering Sean and then confided in Stephen Fulcher that there was another body. They drove to the spot where Becky Godden's body was later discovered. She was last seen in 2003. Mr Fulcher should have taken Halliwell back to a police cell and read him his rights and allowed him representation, but he didn't. Steve Fulcher resigned from Wiltshire Police after being disciplined for not following correct arrest guidelines. Now that detective has told the BBC he believes Halliwell may have had more victims. Halliwell was actually very good at what he does, and he'd clearly been active for a long period of time. It's highly improbable that it wouldn't be something else. The difficulty for me is that I, I haven't got any access to the information because obviously I've lost my career over this case and therefore stuff that would have been blatantly obvious lines of inquiry to conduct, yes. clearly I'm not responsible for, I can't influence and, and I don't believe have been done. There's a lake near Ramsbury. Um, it appears to be Alliwell's favoured deposition site for his victims. Significantly, we found 60 items of women's clothing. Wow. Exactly. Wow. I'd want to know whether those 60 items of clothing found at Ramsbury, one of those was Linda Rizell's, for instance. He seems to have taken plenty of trophies. Do you think that somewhere within Wiltshire Police there will be a full log of, of each of those 60 items of clothing that was found that was thought to be <laughs> Halliwell's trophy? Well, you're dealing with somebody who's murdered at least two people and you've identified a site where one of his murder victims identifiable clothing items are. Oh, really? You've got to bear in mind that we found Sean's boot, we found his second victim, Becky's cardigan, in all probability a cardigan. Now, you don't have to be a detective, a policeman, or even have a double-digit IQ to work out there's a line of investigation there. Of course there is. I'd want to know everything about all those 60 items of clothing. I'd want to know, you know, if Linda's profile did pop up as a consequence of that, mm. well, that would make it rather difficult for Halliwell to explain, yes. wouldn't it? There's another rumour that I've picked up on in one of the press cuttings, that there was something about Halliwell being seen sitting on a wall and doing a sketch of Linda. Yes. What this potential witness has said is that Halliwell formed this sexual relationship, became obsessed with Linda, and would sit outside sketching her at the back of her house. When I spoke to senior officers in Wiltshire Police, they had no uh, ongoing intention to investigate Halliwell further. All I've said is that I've identified a multiple murderer who's almost certainly a serial killer, and I'd want to investigate that connection. Well, it's really intriguing what Steve Fulcher is saying. If there's any link between Linda and Halliwell, that must be investigated because it would have massive implications for Glyn Rizal. Fulcher doesn't think the police have looked into it, but he left the police force in 2014, so we need to know what, if anything, they've done since then.
So I went to see Steve Fulcher. He has been in various media places on Today programme and in various newspaper reports saying there was a direct relationship between Halliwell and Linda Rizal. He was told by serving officers in Wiltshire that they were winding down their investigation into whether Halliwell might be responsible for any other murders. You want to be able to, I suppose, investigate the clothing to see has there been any connection or can they check and test? We yeah, say we could be if there's any unattributed we... DNA profiles found, can we ask that they're compared or confirmed yeah. to have been compared to the profile of Linda? Yes. So I, will, so I will draft a letter then, which is for Wiltshire Constabulary. Yeah, and do you think I should provide descriptions of Linda's clothing? Without yes? shadow of a doubt, yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. And then um, did they follow up the potential link of Halliwell with, uh, with Linda's home address? And I think those are quite key questions to ask and not unreasonable. I mean, when you start looking into this, it seems as if there are masses of things swirling around about Linda and Halliwell and whether Halliwell might be responsible for the murder of, of Linda Rizal. Police believe Rizal kidnapped his 41-year-old wife in this alleyway as she walked to work at Swindon College. What made this murder trial astonishing? There was no body. So Linda disappeared on her way to work in March 2002. Nobody saw her being abducted. Her body's never been found. The prosecution case was that Glynn's motive for murdering Linda was financial. They were going through an acrimonious divorce after 17 years of marriage. Glynn said that he was out on a, a long walk that morning. He said that, that was his alibi. But blood was found in the car he was driving that day, which was matched to Linda. And so he was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. During police interviews read out in court, Glynn Rizal said that the blood must have been planted there to incriminate me. Glynn's theory has always been that Linda staged her own disappearance to set him up, and the blood in the car was planted. The police didn't find blood in it the day that they looked. The day after Linda went missing. In fact, they looked on the Wednesday after Linda went missing. Then they spent five hours on it on the Thursday after Linda went missing. And it was only the following week that they found blood in it. Glynn's never suggested that somebody else is responsible for Linda's murder. He's always stuck to his theory, which is that Linda's still alive. So I need to find out what he thinks of these latest rumours. Hello. Hello, Louise, it's Glenn. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. So, look, Christopher Halliwell, what's your, what's your thinking? What do you really think about whether or not he could be involved? speculation that Christopher Halliwell could be involved in Linda Rizal's murder only came to light in 2016, so that was 14 years after she went missing. 
Halliwell was never in the picture at the time. So I want to go back to the original trial records to see if there's any evidence at all that could link him to this case. If Halliwell was involved in Linda's murder, he would have to have abducted or met her near the alleyway where she was last seen on her way to work. So we know that Linda parked up in this road here and then she was seen walking into this alleyway, which would have taken her down to this road. The detective, Steve Fulcher, said that there were rumours that Christopher Halliwell knew Linda, that he was obsessed with her and he would sit and sketch her. I have found a statement from a woman who was spoken to by the police at the time of Linda's disappearance, and she said that there was a man sitting on a wall just here, just by the alley um, that was near to Linda's route to work. She remembered him because he didn't get out of the way when her child was walking past. Hello, Margaret. Hello. It's Louise Shaw to hear, Margaret, from Inside Justice. Oh, hiya. Hello, hi. What can you remember of that day? Um, so my, my daughter was three years old, I think, and we regularly walked from our house in Upham Road into town um, through Queen's Park. And she balanced along the, the wall, which had sort of wide paving slabs on top at the front of the park. Yeah. This particular day, there was a man sitting in the middle of it, which is nothing unusual, except that he was sort of slumped down. And he didn't respond to the fact that she had walked right up to him. Normally, people sort of smile or got up or offered to get up or something. Yes. I, I mean, his head down, his face wasn't visible, particularly. Was he reading something then? Is that why he was slumped down like that, do no. you think? No, he looked like he was waiting for somebody. And I never thought it was suspicious until we heard about it the next day, what had happened, and I thought, oh, that's very odd, because there was that chap waiting there at that particular time. But so, no, I didn't see any detail or anything at the time. Well, shall I just um, read you through your statement then? It's very short, so it won't take too long, if, that, if, that, if that's good for you. So you say, I can describe him as white, male, 40s, possibly too early. 50s. He had mousy brown hair that was quite short, maybe an inch along all over. I think he had a round area on the top or crown of his head that was thinning, not totally bald, but thinner. It's interesting that my image now of the man slumped on the wall is his position is exactly as I described it then. Yes, it is, yes. All right, Margaret, thank you very much indeed. Not, any more help. not at all. No, it's very good of you to talk to me. Thanks a million. OK. Bye bye. Bye. Well, at the time, Margaret Herbert believed that she might have seen Linda's boyfriend sitting on the wall because she'd seen a picture of him in the newspaper when Linda had disappeared. She describes the man as thin, late 40s, mousy brown hair. That's obviously not Glyn Mazel, but if you compare the description of Christopher Halliwell, and no one was looking for him at the time, then there are similarities there. This could be nothing, but we need to establish if there's any truth in the suggestion that Linda and Halliwell knew each other. Well, the detective Steve Fulcher told me that most of his information about this apparent link between Halliwell and Linda came from the mum of Becky Godden, who was one of Halliwell's victims. Because Fulcher got Halliwell's confession to Becky's murder without following correct procedure, Halliwell couldn't be charged for it. So Becky's mum went onto the streets of Swindon to campaign for his prosecution. In the end, new evidence did come to light, which meant that Halliwell was convicted. Today, Christopher Halliwell has been found guilty of Becky's murder. We have waited over five years for this momentous day. It has been an extremely painful journey. I need to know now exactly where the information comes from that she says links Christopher Halliwell to Linda Rozell. Hello, 
Karen. Louise. Louise, come Hi. on. Hi, thank you very much. Thanks for seeing me. You've been amazing throughout all this, Karen. Oh, I don't know about that. I feel shattered. I chose to, well, try and be positive. And it is hard sometimes, to be honest. But some days you feel stronger than other days. I understand that, that you started campaigning and you were on the streets talking to That's people, right. trying to gather information. So what did they tell you? Uh, they would tell me things like Halliwell murdered more than Becky and Sean. Mm -hmm. I knew him. I used to work with him. Odd character. And then it would be... He murdered Linda Rizal, you know. So what did members of the public tell you about Linda Rizal's case? Whilst I was out there, I had a, a gentleman who come up to me whilst I was petitioning and said to me he knew Halliwell. He said, Halliwell did some building work for Linda and Glenn Rizal. And he had had an affair with Linda Rizal. So Halliwell had had an affair with Linda Rizal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was couldn't... Was he sure? Was he, did you think, did you believe him? Did you... Well, yes, I would probably say there was probably about three people on the whole who told me that they knew that he was having an affair with Linda Rizal. Really? Um, so it was more than... So three people, you think? Three gave, gave people, that and that was two men and a female. And were they all separate? But I, or did they all come individually from, to you? From separate areas. <laughs> did he say how he knew this? No because I didn't go into great detail. When you're out petitioning, campaigning, you just don't have enough time to stand there and have a full-blown conversation. My problem I have now is I don't have these people's details. Ah. Oh. I took the information and gave it to the police. Their answer was, we've got the man that murdered. Linda Rizal. We know from the trial papers that Linda did have an affair with a builder whilst an extension on her house was being built. But he's named and it's not Christopher Halliwell. We also know, though, that Halliwell used to do building work in the Swindon area, so it's possible that he could have also worked on the Rizal extension. The first step, I think, is for me to ask Glyn if he knows the name of his builder. Hello? Hello, it's Glyn Rizal here. Hello, Glyn. Do you know who did the building work on your extension? Yes. Um, we, he, uh, uh, he was a, a Swindon man. Yeah. Um, and he specialised in um, extensions. And do you know who he had working for him? Or if he subcontracted to anybody? Uh, he subcontracted things like plumbing and all the groundwork for the foundations. That was all done by subcontractors. Right. And so do you know who he subcontracted to for the, for the, for the plumbing and the groundwork? I don't OK. How do you know he subcontracted that bit? Uh, because he, they weren't his men and it, they, they'd done things wrong and uh, I'd complained to him and he sort of said, uh, said well, it, they're, not, they're not my men, they're subcontractors. Um, right, that's... A, OK, OK. And, you know, uh, he, he had his, his own team and then he had people that he bought in for other, for other stuff. OK. Glyn has given me the name for the main builder who did the extension work on, on the house. He's called Mark. I want to speak to him and find out who he subcontracted the work to. Was Halliwell one of their workers? Yeah. 
If we can prove that actually Halliwell did work on Linda's house, then we have that connection. Because at the moment, we haven't got a definite connection. We've got rumour, we've got speculation, we've got gossip. Initially, after a major crime, after a serious incident, people will close ranks and they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to get involved. But when someone comes along and asks them, they quite often will say, well, look, I'm glad you asked me because this has been on my mind and I wanted to tell somebody and I didn't know how to do it or I didn't know where to go. So our objective is to try to determine, can you categorically say that Halliwell worked on that house? Yes. OK, that's the first thing. That's it. The extensive work would have been done around about 97, 98. Yes, hello, Mark. It's Jill speaking from Inside Justice. I'm just wondering, would you mind giving me a call today, please? My telephone number is 07973. Right. I don't know if that's still his number. No, but we have ah. the address, don't we? We have Mark's home address. Yes, we do. Nobody's home. Oh, right, sorry. It's, um, it's Jill. I left a message. Um, I'm trying to get hold of Mark. Let's try the pub, then. It's worth a shot, isn't it? You never know. The man we're trying to find, I don't know. Mark. You've got a yeah. No, I haven't. People have been speculating, people have been saying that well, Halliwell knew Linda. He did. He did. In the paper, he did know him. Like, in the paper, wasn't he? Yeah, we were trying to find somebody that actually can. Back yeah, actually, back yeah, yeah, yeah. The person you have called is not available at the moment. Please leave a message. Answer phone. Oh. So right. I just think maybe it's a bit late. Yeah. We are still looking. So Mark, the main builder, isn't turning any of our calls, but we know that he subcontracted the plumbing and groundwork on the Rizal extension. Now, we found out that Christopher Halliwell's father-in-law, former father-in-law, yes, owned a building company in Swindon around that time. Yes. That company did groundwork. And we've also established that Halliwell did work for them. So what we need to know is, was this company Mark's subcontractor? What we want is the father-in-law to be able to tell us categorically, from his own records, yeah. whether or not Halliwell worked on Linda Rizal's house. Yes. OK. We only want the answer to that yes. one question. We're not wanting a third degree. We don't want to dig up loads of dirt. We yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah, know yeah, the ins yeah, and outs yeah, of... Yeah. Office. That gentleman, um, Halliwell's former father-in-law, what, what he said that was, you know, useful and and helpful was yes. that he said we never worked on the Roselle extension. He said we didn't, we didn't do the job. We don't, we never did that work like that. We are major contractors. That's not the kind of work Pitty we'd job have done. Like that. It's really frustrating that the main builder, Mark, won't tell us the names of the subcontractors. Because that would just bottom it out once and for all. So we have permission to do the lie detector. We've recently started asking everyone who applies to Inside Justice if they'll take one. 
It's a standard question as far as we're concerned. We use it as part of our screening process. It's a really useful filter. And Glyn has said he will do it. I've had a letter from the prison and they've approved the uh, polygraph. Marvellous. So I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Will I be told in advance or will I just be pulled out uh, half an hour's notice and say it, it, um, you've got a photograph? What difference would it make? I like to prepare. I'd be more comfortable and you'd probably get a more accurate polygraph result if I wasn't bloody annoyed at, at having had my day disrupted at short notice. There's no reason I, that I can see that I shouldn't be told in advance. And if you want me to do this, you know, at, the le at least be reasonable about it. That's, that's, that's my position. Really. I thought this was something you wanted to do. No, not at all. I've never wanted to do it. It won't help me with my um, appeal in any way because the court doesn't recognise it, because it just uh, takes it down to Jeremy Kyle level. I don't think there's any value in the science at all. It's, it's, you know, it's like astrology well, from, from everything I've read about it. OK, so, well, I, I hear your, um, your wish to be informed in advance. I've got that. OK, well, let's, call it, let's call it a day there, then. All right. And um, I, I'll uh, look forward to hearing from you again um, at an appropriate time. All right. Thanks very much, Glyn. Thank Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Crikey. That's the most rattled I have ever seen. It said this time, I don't want it done. I've never wanted it done, which isn't what he said to me at all before. He was really agitated. Very, very keen to have advance warning of, of when it's going to happen. I'll talk to the expert to find out if that's, um, if that's OK or not. I don't know. Police in Swindon have begun excavation work at the former home of Christopher Halliwell, who's serving a life sentence for the murder of two young women. The 53-year-old killed Becky Godden in 2003 and Sean O'Callaghan in 2011. Since we've been looking at Glynn's case, the police have gone back to two of Halliwell's old addresses. So it's clear there is an ongoing investigation. But we don't know for sure if they're looking into any of the alleged links with Linda. Officers are digging at two addresses. The work is expected to take five days. On the Halliwell link, Becky Godden's mum, Karen Edwards, has put us in touch with someone with more information. So Jill and I have arranged to meet her in a hotel in Swindon. Hello. Hi, I'm Hello. Louise. Come Hello. in. Come in. This is Jill. Hi, Sandy. You heard about a potential link between Halliwell and Linda Rizal. Is that right? Did you That's hear information right, yeah. about that? When we were campaigning, we went to lots of big supermarkets. On one day, this particular lady walked past about three times, pointed out she didn't have any shopping at any stage, and then she was hovering. Um, she came over and spoke to us, and she said that she wanted to give us some information. So, so this lady said that she was a friend of Linda's? She was friends with Linda. Yeah. That Linda worked in a playgroup in Highworth, um, and that's how she knew her. She and... seemed to be a friend of Linda's, and that she said that Linda knew Halliwell. And did she say that Linda told her herself that she knew her Yes, well? and that um, he was a taxi driver and he lurked about when she was walking to work and that he was a pest, that kind of thing. So the lady said that Linda had told her... Yeah. ..that, he, that Halliwell had become a pest? Yeah. Can you remember any specific words that she used? Like, did, would she say... That, did, use the word pest? Or yeah, she used the word pest. He was a pest. That he, he, she said he was obsessed with her and he was a pest. So, and you think she was really em emphatic, you said? Yes, because we thought she was crazy at first, because I thought um, you did get a few people that came up with some really unusual things that they thought were linked, you yes. know. Yeah. And some of them you'd have to take with a pinch of salt and say, I think that's a bit of imagination in there. But she didn't sound crazy. She sounded calm, composed. 
This woman seemed to say that he'd worked on the extension. I mean, you'd have to find out if Linda had had an extension on a house, um, if they, you know, which building company they would have used. I don't mean to doubt you. No, no. Are you certain in your own mind that that this woman said this to you before there's been all this, the speculation definitely. in the press yes, about definitely. Halliwell and building work? Definitely. And... Did she say whether or not she reported to the police or anything like that? No, she didn't. She didn't mention if she had or not. When people sign the petition, do they leave a telephone number? Or do they put no, they somewhere? literally put their name, yes. the signature and the date that they signed. But you still have the list of all the names of people who signed We the do petition. have access to that. I'm sure that we can get access to that. But there was 42,000 signatures. We just haven't got enough to go on, have we? The trouble is, you know, it's, it's hearsay, isn't it? At the moment, what do we know? It's a lady in Highworth whose child went to a playgroup. Play Did she tell you the name of the playgroup? No. All she said was that Linda worked there. You know? yeah. But if Linda worked in a, um, a playgroup in Highworth, then it's possible it was the truth. If, he, if she never worked in a playgroup in Highworth, then it'd be made up, but you don't know, do you? When you're working on a really big case like this, you will read the papers and you will understand them and take the information on a certain level. And then sometimes you get a new piece of information in from somebody and then you read things with a different slant and it just gives you a different take on what you're reading and what you're hearing. Linda was involved in running a playgroup in Highworth. Going back to the court papers, I think this statement here might be from the person that Sandy's referring to. This is a lady who also was involved in the same playgroup at the same time as Linda. I've sent her a letter, but she hasn't replied to that. Hello, it's Louise Shorter here from Inside Justice. I'm just following up on a letter I sent Oh, can can I just talk to you for two minutes? I'm it's it's really a very short thing, but I'm I'm ah no, that's a no. She's just said she's not interested to put the phone down. We can't force people to talk to us. We are really just hoping that their good nature will help us with our inquiries. So I've just seen the police. Um, these were two officers who have been part of the team that's reinvestigated Halliwell. There was a collection of clothing that was found um, around the places where Christopher Halliwell carried out his murders and from where his bodies were found. And there was this sort of, what the press has been calling this trophy store, this sort of haul of clothing. So obviously I want to know, have they checked that, that um, group of clothing against Linda Rizzo's clothing when she disappeared. And they say they have, and that absolutely categorically, they're telling me that Linda's clothing, what she was wearing, doesn't match anything that was found from that haul. Overall, there are lots and lots of loose ends and speculations around Halliwell knowing Linda Rizzo that I've not been able to bottom out. They've said, we'll do more work and we'll report back to you what we find. So I think, you know, a bit of progress. The time has come for Glyn Rizzell's lie detector test. The expert has said it's fine to let Glyn know in advance when it's happening, as he's asked.
I can't go in myself, so I'm going to have to wait nearby while the polygraph expert and his assistant carry out the test. Morning. Morning. Hello. Nice to see you. And you, oh, thank you. Nice okay. to see you. Just talk me through, what questions are you going to ask? Take me through the questions. I think I have to stick to very basic questions there. You're going to say, were you the one that killed your wife? Were you involved in any way in the death of your wife? Now, involved means he may have not purposely physically killed himself. He may have done, he may have paid someone else to do it. We might move on to, do you know where the body is now? But we'll actually look at the technique and time we've got available today. How confident are you that, that, that by the end of the day, when you come back, you're going to be able to tell me whether or not he has killed her? Good examiners, which I am, should be hitting round about mid nineties. Ninety percent, sort of. Ninety about, about, about there. So ninety-five percent. Round about there. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible for him to fail it today, because he's really anxious and worried and nervous about no, about my, how it my, goes? No, my no. Nervous reactions are completely different to deceptive reactions. If that was the case, then everyone would fail a polygraph test. So we're measuring a different type of nerves. It's not so anxiety. Everyone is anxious. Everyone is nervous doing polygraph tests. The reality is nervous reactions don't count. How long will you be in the prison for? Uh, two or three hours. OK, thanks right. very much. I'll see you later, Amy. See you later. OK, bye now. Come on. Great. I'm just going to have to sit and wait, which is nerve-wracking, frankly. I know it's, you know, I've always said, well, it's one of those things that you put into the mix with everything else in terms of our investigation. But if he passes the test, I think it will give his case an absolutely enormous lift. How did it go? Um, he wants to um, consider his options, whatever that means. So we did spend some time talking to him, well, two and a half hours. Uh, at the end of it, he said, I've been looking at things and been thinking about things. Um, if I take a polygraph test, there is no upside if I pass it. He'd written on a piece of paper, he said, options, upside of doing it, upside of down doing it, and there's no upside if I pass it. So, at that point, we had to stop. He told us to stop. Didn't want to go ahead. We are left in somewhat no man's land. Mm. OK, all right. All right. See you later, ladies. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. He answered straight off the first time I ever asked him, will you do it? Yes, he would. He's been asked before by, other, by another journalist. Yes, I'll do it, no problem. Couldn't get an expert in before. This is the first time anyone has ever managed to actually get an expert into the prison to go ahead with it. And at that point, he says, on reflection, I'm not going to do this. Hello. Hello, Louise. It's Glenn. Yeah? Hello, Glenn. How are you? Uh, I'm OK, thank you. I'm ever so sorry about yesterday. What happened? Uh, well, I haven't really understood why we're doing it. I, I will do a polygraph test if you think it's it's important, but it, it just undermines the rest of the work we're doing. In my mind, it does, because it's a pseudoscience. Are you worried that you would fail it? I am worried about the consequences of, of uh, a false positive. I am worried about Let's that. talk about it in terms of failing it, uh, Glyn, rather than talking about it as false positive. By and large, people either very clearly pass one or they very clearly fail. I don't think that's the case. I think that about 10% of people can uh, de defeat a polygraph. I don't think the polygraph is reliable. If it, if it was reliable, we'd all be using it, and I'll have taken one years ago. Well, Why are we doing it? If you had said to me right at the very beginning, when I first asked you, will you take a polygraph, if you had said to me at that point, well, I'm really worried about the science, then we would have had a very different set of conversations. But you haven't said that. Right from the very beginning, you said, yes, I'd be happy to take one. You then asked me a 
series of questions about, you know, will I know exactly what I'm going to be asked? Will I know exactly when it's going to take place? Or all, all these sorts of things. I've answered every single one of those questions and I've met every single demand. Okay, and you didn't say to me on, on Friday of last week, no, I don't want to do it. Or you didn't say a week ago, you said on the day when the expert was in front of you with his kit. It wasn't at the start. It was when the expert um, had, had revealed a lot of new information to me. I know I've, I've wasted everybody's time and I feel terrible for that, but I felt that I needed to have this conversation with you um, before going ahead with it because I just cannot see uh, um, the benefit. It's not going to help my appeal and, and if I fail it, it's an absolute disaster. How do, you, how do we re rebuild the trust? All right. Thank you. Bye bye. <sighs> the way that Glyn has handled the lie detector unnerves me, without a doubt. It isn't. It isn't hard evidence. We know it's not admissible in court. But I think what we have to do moving forward is be, be calm and rational about it and think, well, let's look at that piece of information alongside all the ev other evidence that we have. The main evidence that convicted Glyn was the blood evidence found in the car that he was driving on the day that Linda disappeared. It was found in a few places, in the boot, on the underside of the parcel shelf, and also on the footwell mat in the front of the car. That was Linda's blood. But there have always been questions about this evidence because the car was searched three times before any blood was found. Now, our experts have identified that forensic hooverings were taken on the second search, which we don't think have ever been tested. We wanted to get those hooverings analysed uh, because our thinking was if there wasn't any blood in them, it would add weight to Glynn's theory that the blood was planted before that final search when the blood was found. But we've now heard back from the police and unfortunately, they've said that they won't release the hooverings to us. Good morning and welcome. The customer is joining this C847 for London Liverpool Street. It's disappointing that we can't do the tests that might have told us when the blood got into the boot, but can the available evidence tell us how exactly it got there? In court, the forensic scientist who gave evidence said the blood could only have come from exposure to Linda Rizal's body or something wet with her blood. I've asked our experts to re-examine the original forensic reports and look more closely at the pattern of blood that was found to see what they think about how it could have been deposited. So, so when we met before at the garage when we had the car, mm. you you were fairly confident, I think, about the about the blood being in there and wanted to check the hooverings. Yes. But since that time, you've come together and reviewed all of the paperwork in this case and tried to build up a picture as to how you think that blood got in there, whether it was missed the whole time, um, and whether it was planted. What what's your view now, having reviewed all of it? Um, this diagram shows us. A representation of the blood that was in the in the in on this parcel shelf 
it tells you that there's a spread of blood. There's not a huge amount, but, you know, moderate amount, perhaps. A proportion of those stains have been categorised. Let's see. So here we have, there's a comment here that this is a two millimetre by two millimetre spot of blood. A spot is a droplet of blood that has landed onto that surface. But we don't know how it came to be a droplet. Okay. It just travelled through the air and it landed in that position. There are other areas here, for example, contact smear. This suggests that there's been contact between the parcel shelf and, and a, a source of wet blood and it's been smeared across the surface. So the features of the stain are, are able to tell you a little bit about how it got there. These little ones here, we've got these yeah. long ones, what yeah. are they? I have no idea. Just because there's a, 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 an elongation on that stain does not mean that that is a directional or a stain with um, a tail on it. Right. So it just means it's sometimes a, you a have, shape. So sometimes you have blood then that's got a little tail on it, which shows that it was flying in a certain direction. Yeah, is that that's true? right. Yeah, but you just haven't got enough angle. information here, you're saying, Correct. to it's tell. There's not enough of them, are there? Spots with tails, if you see a lot of them, then you can, you can begin to draw up a pattern of where, where the blood has come from. But here you're just seeing an occasional that's elongated spot. Okay. Yeah. What would you say overall the evidence is, is telling you? On balance, planting does not seem very likely to me. It's very difficult to produce a pattern like this. It seems more likely that she was injured and was present in the boot after she had been injured. So, are you saying that because that actually because these are such tiny spots and they're so discreet and fine mm. amongst this, you know, really quite big space, that that makes you think it wasn't deliberately planted? Yes, there's only certain sort of mechanisms that would produce a pattern like that. Uh, you'd have to reproduce those. You'd have to know enough about blood deposition and blood patterns to to recreate something like this that isn't obvious as well. And if you're going to plant something, you'd want it to be obvious, wouldn't you? Jay, what do you think? Given everything on balance, my view is that it was always in the boot and it was just simply missed. It's not in keeping with being planted and it's most likely because Linda Rizal's body was in the boot of the car. Okay, mm. so the blood in the boot, I mean, we would have never looked at this case without the question marks about the blood in the boot. Um, with, do you believe there's, there's any evidence at all to support the theory that it was planted? No, I don't. I can't... S it, it's just not credible, really. I agree. I mean, in my opinion, there's not good evidence that the blood's been planted. It's consistent with Linda's body being placed in the boot and transported after she was in, injured. I am absolutely satisfied it was there all the time. All right, so, Christopher Halliwell, I went to see um, Wiltshire Constabulary and they were, they were very forthcoming, actually. And I do know from them now categorically that they have checked the clothing hall mm. and there is nothing in there at all okay. that resembles any of the clothing Linda Rozelle was wearing when she went missing. We have found absolutely no credible link whatsoever mm. between Christoph Christopher Halliwell and Linda Rozelle. Mm. And I don't see where else we can go with that. For me, that's, that's as far as we can take it. I think we've answered the queries that we had, which made us want to progress the case. So these are the things that are troublesome, and we've answered those questions, so they're not troublesome anymore. So I don't know that there is anything else we could do that would be fruitful. I think in terms of all the other investigative leads, we've shaken that tree to quite a massive extent and nothing's fallen out. No, it's been, a, it's been a case for me that, for, I think, say, for 15 years, there have always been little question marks around it, and I, I don't think they are for me anymore. I think, actually, let's close it and move on. All right, thank you. Thank you.
Hello. Hello, it's Glenn Russell here. Hello, Glenn. How are you? Uh, I'm OK, thank you. And yourself? Yes, not bad at all. Thanks very much. OK, so we had an advisory panel meeting. As you know, we did a, quite a lot of work around the link between Linda and Christopher Halliwell. Yes. We tried to, just tried to get all sorts of information from anyone who knew anything about Halliwell. And I have to say, hand on heart, I don't think there's anything in this allegation of a link between Linda and Christopher Halliwell at all. Um, OK. I don't, I don't, and that's a surprise, but the fact that it's excluded and the whole of the Halliwell stuff then looks like it's a complete red herring. Um, in, in some ways, uh, it, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing, at least we know. The big one, I think, Glyn, that um, we're left with, really, is the blood and the boot of the car. Yeah. The thing, you know, that is, is really completely and utterly de devastating is that we've got experts saying, if you look at the pattern of the blood in the boot, I don't believe um, that there is any evidence whatsoever to support the idea that this was planted. There is evidence here that it wasn't planted, that it is from, from, it, from this boot of the car being a crime scene. That's... <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I... Do you understand that? I do understand that. Um, it, it's not what I expected. But I had thought that it had been deliberately placed like that um, in order to make it look like it wasn't planted. I think this leaves us at a point where we can't do anything else. I think we have to close our file now on your case. Uh, I'm very grateful for the work that you've done, even though it hasn't got all the results that I'd hoped it might. Right, well, well thank you ever so much indeed for, for everything you've done. That's all right. Okay. All right. OK, bye-bye, Glenn. Bye. I think he was surprised by all of that. Why didn't you ask him if he was guilty? Oh, I don't think I don't think Glim will ever say anything other than the same thing he said for fifteen years. Was it a mistake to take this on? No, absolutely not. It was right that we should properly examine the strands of evidence, the things that made this case really noteworthy. Our work has led to very definite and very serious answers. All of that evidence had to be explored properly. We've done that, we've reached answers, that's the end of the case. I'm glad we took it on. <laughs>